and uh, I'm going to talk today to you um, about telemedicine. Um, and I know there's a uh, variety of uh, expertise in the room. Um, uh, we've got a couple of doctors that we can call on to uh, keep us all honest. Um, but uh, uh, lots is go a lot of things are going on in the uh, area of telemedicine and uh, just looking to uh, bring you a little bit up to speed today on, on some of the uh, exciting developments. Um, the basic definition of telemedicine, patient here, clinical expertise over here, the network connects it to, uh, to make it happen. Uh, exchanging medical information over a network, uh, the American Telemedicine Association says telemedicine and telehealth are synonyms. Um, M-Health has recently become a popular term, telecare. Uh, not too worried about, you know, the particular uh, definitions rather than the ability to provide patient care where the expertise is not necessarily in the same exact room as the patient. Again, focused on patient care, providing health, mobile health. A lot of effort is going on in the remote monitoring space. Um, a uh, group can monitor a set of ICUs, intensive care units, from a single location. We'll talk today about some of the um, outsourced specialty services. Um, my screen disappeared. Okay, um, so why telemedicine? One of the biggest drivers in terms of uh, uh, telemedicine is that there is a shortage of physicians. We are now introducing 30 million new patients into the healthcare system through Obamacare, but there's been nothing to address the supply. Um, and, you know, how are you going to be able to accommodate all those additional patients? Expertise is distributed. Um, no one doctor has all of the answers but there are specialists and subspecialists that can be accessed to be able to get access to their expertise. It works. This is not a lab experiment anymore. Um, uh, it is working today. You'll see you know, about the number of patients being uh, uh, supported by uh, telemedicine. For the providers that are uh, doing this, they are uh, finding cost savings in their network. And again, a lot of uh, about medicine today is uh, achieving those cost savings. <laughs> Patients like the service. These are just a couple of um, headlines of uh, articles where you know you know patients are satisfied. They're not feeling like they're missing anything, uh, uh, you know, through the use of some of these telemedicine services. A little bit of history. Uh, this is a, a cover from. Radio News Magazine in, I think it was 1924. Um, uh, the Radio Doctor, maybe. So this is not a new concept. You know, 90 years ago, um, uh, the thought of uh, being able to communicate over a radio or a network with, with, with your doctor. Um, one of the earliest uh, 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 real examples of telemedicine uh, it was um, uh, up at Massachusetts General Hospital, and you'll see reference to Mass General several times today. Um, but they had a problem in uh, 1967. Um, Logan Airport and Mass General, less than 10 miles apart, were separated by the Callahan Tunnel. It could take hours to get from the airport to the hospital, and um, this is before the big dig. Uh, which has a little bit sol solved the problem, but the uh, the doctors at Mass General were responsible for patients that might be landing at Logan Airport in the uh, in you know in, in the need of um, um, support. Uh, so hooked up a camera with a nurse at the airport. Um, able to transmit information with the, uh, you know, to the doctors back at the hospital, and again, you know, one of the first um, 
commercial applications. Um, on a personal note, I had the opportunity to work with Mass General. I was actually working next door to this building. It was at the time owned by 9X. It was a 9X science and technology building. And we did a early uh, telemedicine trial with four of the Boston teaching hospitals, including Mass General in the 1990s, and it was one of the um, earlier uh, trials, um, you know, in the area of um, teleradiology and telecardiology. And uh, interesting to see that our old 9X building is about to become the new Westchester headquarters of Sloan Kettering, so uh, an another link in terms of the uh, telecom and um, healthcare. So mentioned a little bit of the remote services. So to me, telemedicine is the all-encompassing term. Um, you have teleradiology, telecardiology, telepsychiatry, teledermatology, teleophthalmology. Um, these are all, uh, you know, in effect, uh, you know, today. Um, here are some of the companies that are providing the services. Um, teleradiology specialists is one of um, over a hundred commercial teleradiology providers. Um, specialists on call, which provides both neurology and psychiatry support for hospitals, raised $23 million this week uh, in terms of uh, supporting their efforts. Um, dermatologists on call. If you're in Pennsylvania and you don't want to wait two weeks to get an appointment with your dermatologist, you take out your smartphone, you take a picture of that um, mole or that rash, and within 30 minutes, a doctor will let you know either what your condition is or, yes, in fact, you do need to see a dermatologist. Uh, but again, this is um, operating today. Also, another company that recently raised five to six million dollars in terms of uh, their, their commercial efforts. Um, Hubble Telemedical uh, is doing work in teleophthalmology. They have a database of retinal exams and they are, or ret retinal studies, and they're doing remote retinal exams and with an expert system comparing the results of that remote exam with their database, not um, replacing the doctor, but assisting the doctor in terms of being able to do uh, diagnosis. Um, CardioRed, similarly, uh, you know, with the teleradiology, they're doing telecardiology and um, able to, uh, uh, you know, in addition to the x-rays, CAT scans, and the MRIs that the radiologists are reading, CardioRed has expert doctors reading EKGs, um, uh, you, know, you know, stress tests, uh, you, know, uh, you, know, you know, sonograms. Uh, so again, you know, commercial efforts. Um, this was a chart that was put together uh, for, in 2012 by the American Telemedicine Association. Twelve, uh, 10 million patients served in 2012 by telemedicine. Again, the, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the bulk there was teleradiology. Teleradiology is still growing, but uh, the uh, other specialties, the cardiac monitoring, remote monitoring, are all growing, and I would suspect when we get the 2013 statistics, you'll you'll see uh, you know the, the the next bar to the right with a higher number of patients. I'm just going to talk a little bit about teleradiology, and there are now two very distinctive types of teleradiology. Traditionally, this uh, uh, started as a Nighthawk service. There was a need. This replaced the need for the doctor to be on call at night when there was an emergency room case and the ability to read those CAT scans primarily from the emergency room um, uh, provided a great benefit. More than 50% of the hospitals in the country are now using a teleradiology service. Uh, more recently, on the Dayhawk side, um, providing support for urgent care centers, um, uh, you know, imaging centers, uh, you know, physician practices, a little bit of a different model, more focused on x-rays, but there are now uh, 10,000 urgent care centers 
um, in the country. They don't have a radiologist on site. They need somebody to read their exams. Online services, you know, exist today, and the you know the ability over a network to talk to your physician. We're going to see a demonstration of that in a few minutes. Uh, consumer health applications um, on your smartphone. 40,000 apps doing health care. Uh, and just a couple of weeks ago, the FDA came out with guidelines leading towards regulations about which types of applications are going to fall under FDA jurisdiction. Uh, I mentioned urgent care. Uh, 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 Dr. Earl's not uh, yet with us. Um, new urgent care center in Connecticut. He's built a couple of really nice facilities. On his website, online doctor visits can provide the same for certain uh, cases or conditions, the, you know, the same type of support online that, um, uh, you, know, you know, over the network that he can do in his facilities. This is one of my favorites. This is a smartphone attachment that will read EKGs, single strip EKG reading, um, which can be transmitted to a physician. This device cost $195, and there are others on the market for $150. Um, to be able to, um, you know, you know wear wearables, this is a, a pulse oximeter uh, that can be transmitted. Um, Scanadu, vital signs, this little white temperature, blood pressure, heart monitor. Take that uh, little device, put it on your forehead, uh, it gathers the information. These are all, you know, products and services in the marketplace. Soon to come, uh, Dr. Agarwal is with us. Um, he is looking at developing a telehealth service, and what makes his unique compared to some of the others is that he is looking to not only be able to provide consultations, but to be able to uh, connect to scales, an otoscope, blood pressure, stethoscope, so the patient can transmit their vital signs that is going that are going to be part of the exam that uh, Dr. Agarwal and his colleagues will be able to deliver. Um, there are efforts going on in robotics. You've heard a little bit about uh, you know remote surgery, um, live monitoring over cell phones, all you know part of the. Um, uh, uh, the, the infrastructure or the, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, you know all, all part of, uh, you know, telemedicine activities. Back to Mass General for a second. Uh, this is, again, existing um, services, a 3D lab. So not only can they read your CAT scans, they can take a series of CAT scans, create 3D images. This is a, uh, you know, for a cardiac CT study. They're also doing advanced tumor metrics. So with the uh, images that they're being sent, they can do qualitative and quantitative reports based on that tumor, uh, you know, with the, um, you know, mass general doctors. Um, a couple of supporting services uh, you can't uh, operate in this uh, environment without an electronic medical record. Um, if you have a chance, uh, meet uh, uh, Sony from um, OmniMD. Not only do they have a great cloud-based electronic medical record, but he can provide it to you for free. And uh, it's, a, it's a very interesting model. Um, OnePax is a company that, you know, again, on the radiology space that, uh, you know, provides a uh, picture archiving and communication system. Um, so one of our friends from Computer Blue, I thought, oh, here. Uh, Welcome. Um, again, uh, all, all of the networks, you know, you know we'll, we'll need um, some type of uh, IT support, and uh, Computer Blue has been working in that space in terms of providing expert uh, care. Um, uh, if you uh, get a chance to uh, pick up the, uh, the literature, um, Cooperate Marketing has been a big help in terms of branding and, um, uh, you know, all of the design for, uh, for the new company. 
there are some barriers. Maybe we'll talk a little bit about this in the question and answers. There's questions about reimbursement and licensure and regulation. We'll be happy to answer some of those. Uh, but again, you know, in terms of healthy practices, really the question to the folks in the audience is, you know, how can we help you? You know, our intention is to be a service provider delivering services to folks that are in the healthcare uh, technology space and working with you to do that.